All right. I'm hopefully only going to go over this once. Um, so I hope I can be clear enough that somebody will understand what the hell I'm trying to say. We're talking about protein, digestion, efficiency, absorption, etc., etc., etc. There are two different things to consider. When you consider that the body's very efficient at absorbing protein, digesting protein, digesting protein, uh, when that statement is made, that's a true statement, probably 98% of the protein you intake can be digested. But at what cost? See, here's the part you can't, you can't gloss over this and just ignore that. That's where you have to stop. That's the tripwire. At what cost? Because... A lot of the things that you read scientifically, these are directed toward mass population normal people. We're not normal people if you're interested in building as much body muscle mass as possible. So it's true you need less protein to maintain that muscle than what it's going to take to acquire it initially. And then everybody can nitpick. I'm not, you know, you do create new muscle. The longer that you lift, you do create, you grow additional nuclei. New, brand new muscle, which you will never lose. That's what muscle memory is. It's not bro science, it's real science. And after you've been training long enough, and you have developed a whole bunch of new uh, muscle nuclei, it will be much, much more easy for you to return after a, a long layoff where you have atrophied and regain that muscle that you previously held, the size, the mass, because you still have the same number of muscle cells and you have more muscle cells than when you first started lifting to begin with because of the additional nuclei. Um, the addition of anabolics will speed up the process of acquiring these additional nuclei. So let's get that out of the way. First myth we want to bust and get through. It's real. Muscle memory exists. I've told you this before. You know, I'm not going to list studies because they're too numerous and too easy to find for you. If you really give a rat's ass and you have that much time, just search it and you can read them off. Uh, we'll lead you in the right direction. But other than that, if you have that much time in your hands to sort through all these studies and keep reading them, keep reading them, keep reading them, then uh, you, you know you got more time in your hands than I have. You need to find a hobby, another hobby. Um, you know, maybe spend more time lifting. Other thing that you need to consider is, okay, I can digest all this protein. Well, let's not say digest. Let's just say, uh, all right, we can say digest. I can digest most of this protein. So therefore, it doesn't matter if I take most of this protein at one time or two times in a 24-hour period or if I break it up into small feedings. Not so. False. Myth. You need to take in this protein uh, in, in, in feedings that are spread out because the body actually has, hold on to your seats, folks, no real way to store and just hang on to large amounts of uh, protein and amino acids more, you know, beyond which it can use at that time. You really can't just hold on. There's no place to really store a whole lot of it. Um, so the body sheds excess protein in the form of nitrogen. Most of the time it'll be urea. You'll piss it out. But there's other ways too. I mean, it sheds it off in skin, dead skin cells, uh, uh, nails, hair. You know, you, that's easy enough to figure out. But also through sweat. All through, also through sweat, which you'll find um, not as easily if you go to look for studies. You'll find all these other ways the body sheds extra protein in the form of nitrogen and gets rid of it but you you may not find so much on sweat but you will find it it's there and if you want to find it for yourself if you've ever taken in too much protein if your protein's mad high which is not a good thing and it is it can be rough on your kidneys it absolutely can be if you're taking in too much protein then um you're going to sweat it out and what will happen is when you work out in the gym you may not smell it at the time you may because it comes on so slowly and gradually and you're within that capsule of stench, you may not smell it initially, but when you go home and you take off that 
shirt or maybe you take it off in the locker room or whatever. You take it home, throw it in the laundry basket or whatever you're going to do with it. Maybe, maybe uh, you're a trifling type and you're going to hang it up on something and put it back on again. Well, when you go buy it again and pick it up the washer, you pick it off of wherever it is and you smell it, it smells like piss now. And I know that if you've been around a long time, lifting a long time, eating a lot of protein, you've experienced this. What that is, is the body ridding excess protein, more or less, you know, amino acids in the form of nitrogen. And this creates a load on the liver, believe it or not. Liver has to deal with most of this stuff before it can get rid of it. Um, so it does matter uh, feeding frequency and times. It, so yeah, it can be true to say that your body is very efficient at digesting protein. But the other aspect of that, you have to consider all these details for us, for our purposes, are, um, are at what cost? What cost? Well, what cost? What do we pay with things? What do we use to pay with anything in this, in this world? Calories. Calories are the coin of the realm, as always. So, yeah, there are different, different sources of protein and types of protein initially in the raw form. And by raw, I don't mean uh, whole foods as versus a supplement or any other thing. Well, all I'm saying is when, as it comes in your mouth, because the body's got to do a whole bunch of shit to before that. Uh, it gets to the cell level. It has to get there. It gets down into the bloodstream as amino acids. Then it has to be uh, each cell, depending on what it needs and the structure of your DNA, what that cell's for, will combine various amino acids to reconstitute it or recompose it into a protein to repair muscle tissue or whatever have you. So it, it's a bunch of shits. You don't even really need to know. It's just, you know. All right, sorry for the... Uh, interruption there cards so full I had to clear some shit off of it um, so where were we uh, calories being the coin of the realm and being of great interest to us uh, because if you don't have enough calories on hand to to get through the day then if you're taking in more than sufficient amounts of protein or even just what for us is considered sufficient body's going to resort to using some of that for calories. If that's not available at the time, then the body's going to go cannibalize muscle tissue, which may not, may not be readily noticeable to you in small losses because um, the, the layer of fat covering it and water or whatever else is there. But that's what will happen, and you'll just end up chasing your tail in this cycle of decline. Um, the calories being coined in the realm... Various proteins from various sources, as they come into your mouth require different amounts of energy to digest. See, this is the part that is, you can't just ignore that. That's one of the key things. It's not just enough to understand that, well, my body's very efficient at digesting protein. It's an you know, evolutionary thing. Uh, we can digest 98% of the protein we consume. Um, okay, but at what cost? There's where you get into things like uh, assimilation rates and... Uh, you know, all these things tie in and link together, and they're different with different sources of proteins in the foods that you intake. If, uh, uh, actually, now you're getting into, you know, th thermogenics, which, you know, is my thing. Thermogenics uh, work for you, work against you, um, in light of this is what we're trying to do. Okay, this ain't normal people shit. You gotta understand, it's totally different. If you do everything that normal people do, you ain't gonna look like this, right? Um, so thermogenics, when you start to get into that, you're talking about how many, how much, how expensive is it going to be for your body when you're selecting a, a source of protein you want to consume? How expensive is it going to be to digest that? That's what you got to understand. Because there's calories, okay? We have to take that out of the register, so to speak, to pay for that process and that choice. So there's where it comes into uh, consideration when you're choosing proteins that you should consider how much the caloric expense is going to be, you know, comparable to another source of protein. In other words, if you're trying to gain muscle mass, if that's where you're at at the moment, then you are going to want to pick proteins that are the least expensive calorically to digest and to absorb. You want to pick, you know, um, things that don't, that aren't going to cost or tax the system and burn many calories. And conversely, if you're trying to diet and lose body fat, again, as I've said millions of times, probably, 
uh, somewhere or another. You want to choose proteins that are more expensive and you're going to burn more calories. So you're digging that deficit, still caloric deficit, but you're digging it in the back end. You know, you're burning up energy rather than denying energy, right? When I diet, I don't deny and cut down the amounts of energy that come into the body. I ramp up the amounts of energy required to uh, process, digest those food choices. And then I go further, you know, and dig the hole with uh, output, crank up the output. So basically you're cranking up the output period. So you're still creating a caloric deficit. So that's what you need to understand. Uh, you, do you want X, do you need those excess calories you're trying to gain at the end of the day? Or do you want to create a deficit because you're trying to lose? That's where protein choices and sources are going to come in. Simple as that. That's all there is to it. So it's much more than just to, hey, okay, so you can, you can digest the protein very efficiently. Great. But uh, define efficient. In, in, in our considerations with, for what we need to do, what we're trying to do, um, part of efficiency is going to be the expenditure of calories in the, in the digesting of that protein. So it all goes together. It's this ball of uh, mix-match type of bodily functions and processes that you don't need to understand completely. You just get a loose layman's grip on and you'll be just fine. Uh, you can't just single one out and completely ignore another aspect that's as important or more important because none of it works unless it's all a team effort, you understand? So there you go. That's where you need to understand. You can digest the protein, hey, great, but at what expense and what cost? So when I talk about what's more difficult to digest and what's e more easily digested, I'm always talking about expense, referring to calories, which are the coin of the realm for us that's where all the magic happens. Um, excess protein, the body cannot really store large amounts of excess protein at any, at any given moment. Not like you think it can, it can't. Not like you think it can. And what it will do is shed that in the form of nitrogen. Uh, so, if you want to eat all your shit at one time, you let me know how that works out for you. You want to eat two meals a day, load up on the protein, let me know how that works out for you. I'm not saying you can't make progress, depends on where you're at right now, it's all relative. You ain't gonna look like this. I, I can. I would bet money. Bet money on that. Um, and again, the other thing is, there's nobody, you know, with this kind of muscle mass, that's gonna tell you that you can. See, there's, there's got to be something to it. This is what you got to understand. There's nobody with this sort of muscle mass that's telling you a bunch of different shit. They'll tell you the same thing when you ask. Meal frequency. Yeah, you should break your protein ingestions up throughout the day. Okay, well, you can read all you want, and your assessment of what you read can be, oh, it's just as efficient and effective for me just to have one big feeding or two big feedings. It doesn't make any difference. All the studies say that and show that. That's great. So if you have a lack of muscularity, you know, um, when compared to what's in your head where you want to be, what you visualize, you can thank all the studies that you're following for that. Or you can just ask somebody that's been there, done that, and continues to do it. Um, you need sporadic, you know, you need, you need to spread those feedings out. They don't have to be particularly uh, strategically timed necessarily, but they just need to be divided up throughout the day. You don't have to overcomplicate it. It's just common sense. It's pretty simple. So I don't know if this helps anybody. Hopefully it does.